All right, good morning, Chair Postman, Member Garrett, staff and guests. The lobby is open and recording has begun. Thanks, Dustin. Good morning, everybody. We will convene the Washington State Liquor and Cannabis Board Caucus meeting for April 26, 2022. Our first item is to approve the minutes of our April 19th, 2022 meeting. Motion to approve that. I move approval of the April 19th Board Caucus minutes. Great, and that is approved. Um, our next item is a memorandum of agreement uh, for review and consideration uh, between the LCB and the Sauk Seattle uh, Indian Tribe. Uh, Nicola Reed, our Compliance and Adjudications Manager, is here to present that. Good morning. Thank you. So good morning, Chair Postman, Board Member Garrett. Today I'm bringing forth a memorandum of agreement that we have negotiated with the Sauk Seattle Indian Tribe. We've worked together effortlessly, and initially they will start with just one location, but they may expand in the future. And so with that, I'm wondering if I have any, if you have any questions or if there's any additional information I can provide. Now for me, uh, you and I had a chance to talk about it last week. I think it's uh, a great step forward and um, uh, glad we're able to get it done and uh, um, can, you know, they can start business and we'll see what comes in the future. Thank you, Chair Postman. And not seeing any other questions, I'll uh, uh, entertain a motion to approve the uh, memorandum of agreement um, uh, for the uh, uh, license for the Sauk Seattle tribe. I move approval of the MOU. And agreement. I will second, so that is approved. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Ms. Reed, and congratulations to uh, the tribe and its uh, leadership for uh, the successful completion of that. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank okay, you. Uh, now we're going to move into uh, uh, rules briefings. Uh, we've got uh, uh, two petitions up first, and um, I see Kathy Hoffman and Audrey. Uh, Kathy, we turn over to you. Oh, no, this can go directly to Audrey. Wait, go ahead, Audrey. You, all right, <laughs> Ms. you're on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, Chair Postman, Board Member Garrett. Thanks for the opportunity to be here today and present the staff recommendations on two rule petitions related to alcohol service at food trucks that the board received from Sydney Simon on March 1st. So I'll just jump right in. Sydney Simon's first rule petition requests amendment of the definition of building in WAC 3140710 subsection 2 so that stationary food trucks could become eligible for licenses to sell spirits, beer, and wine. The second rule petition from Sydney Simon requests a similar amendment to the same WAC to allow stationary food trucks to engage in to-go sales of spirits, beer, and wine. So I'll begin with the issue presented by the first petition, whether the board should amend that definition of building in WAC so that stationary food trucks could become eligible for spirit beer wine sales. So just some background on the current law and rule. So food trucks are not eligible for, for any of the liquor license types available in statute. For example, the restaurant and snack bar license types require licensees to sell alcohol for consumption on premises. and on-premises liquor license premises is defined in rule in WAC 3140210 -10, subsection 15 as a building in which a business is located inside that is allowed to sell alcohol for consumption on the license premises. Building is further defined in WAC 3140210 sub 2 and that's the definition in question um, as it quote a stationary structure with Florida ceiling solid walls and a roof a food truck is not a building, end quote. So essentially in order to sell consumption for alcohol on premises, a licensee is required to have an indoor area available for alcohol service. While there are rules that allow on-premises licensees to engage in outdoor service of alcohol, those rules are grounded in the fact that on-premises licensees have an indoor area available for alcohol service also. Um, for example, the rules for outdoor alcohol service in WAC 3 and 203205 state the licensee must have a building that provides indoor dining or production in order to qualify for an outdoor alcohol service area. Uh, additionally, although the, the petition from Sydney Simon focuses on stationary food trucks or businesses that fall in a gray area, to use language from the petition, between food truck and building, 
Food trucks are potentially mobile structures, and expanding the definition of building in rule to include potentially mobile structures, such as food cr food trucks, excuse me, would create tension and conflict with other rules and statutory requirements. So, for example, the board's licensing system requires alcohol licensees to have a physical location. The board's required to make certain that all licensees have exclusive rights to an area in which they're serving alcohol, notify the local authority of the license application, and notify churches, schools, and public institutions within 500 feet of the physical location. And the RCWs and WACs are uh, cited in the rule petition, so I won't kind of bore you with the string of citations right now. Um, so for potentially mobile structures, the board is not able to determine the physical location where the licensee will serve alcohol. Unlike a traditional building, a stationary food truck could be located in one location at the time of the license application, but could potentially be moved at another time. So they wouldn't be able to determine any of those uh, required things like how far they are from surrounding churches, schools, public institutions, if they have permission from the local authority, etc. There's also public health and safety concerns related to allowing alcohol service at food trucks related to the increased alcohol outlet density. Um, that's described in more detail in the petition as well. And there's some concerns related to the ability of food trucks to effectively monitor alcohol consumption and minor access in the areas um, where alcohol would likely be consumed surrounding these potentially mobile structures. And I also just wanted to take a moment and address some of the COVID-19 impacts on businesses that Sydney Simon's petition raised. So um, in the email containing both the rule petitions, Sydney Simon states these amendments are needed because, quote, parts of this rule have been enforced for some businesses, not others. It's not in line with new changes to WSLCB rules since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic and makes growth of businesses struggling to survive and revitalize the economy of Washington State harder than needs necessitate, end quote. So just um, to address some of those concerns that the definition of building does not align with the new changes to rule, um, you know, the agency does recognize the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on businesses and the difficulties that these businesses have faced over the past several years. So for example, beginning in March of 2020, the agency worked to find temporary ways for businesses to expand their operations using methods that would not put the health of employees or customers at risk. With uh, House Bill 1480, uh, certain ex temporary privileges were extended related to alcohol to go sales and outdoor alcohol service. And that was one of the outcomes of those agency efforts. However, with that bill, with 1480, the legislature did not change the underlying requirements for restaurants or snack bars or create a new food truck license type. So really the, that definition of building in WAC is already in alignment with the agency rules to implement 1480. So um, with respect to the second petition, uh, a lot of the same issues are covered, but there is an additional issue of the to-go sales of spirits, beer, and wine. So in order to obtain an endorsement to sell alcohol to-go, a business needs to have an eligible liquor license that is specified in House Bill 1480. There's the three types of temporary endorsements, the to-go sales of manufacturer sealed products, the to-go sales of cocktails and wine by the glass, and the to-go sales of growlers. And those are specified um, in the bill as being available to different types of licenses listed out. And um, a business that's ineligible to obtain any of the specified liquor licenses in 1480 would be ineligible to sell to go alcohol. So with respect to whether a food truck would be eligible to obtain a liquor license, you know, if they're not eligible, then they would also not be eligible for to go sales. For those reasons, agency staff find that the issue of whether to allow alcohol service at food trucks would be a significant, is a significant policy issue, and it would be premature to address without legislative direction. So we do not recommend adding the definition of bill, uh, amending the definition of building, excuse me, in WAC through in 407010 to allow stationary food trucks to sell alcohol, whether to go or otherwise. And the staff recommendation at this time would be for the board to deny both of the rule petitions submitted by Sydney Simon on March 1st. So I know that was a lot of material. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about either of the petitions. Uh, can you just remind everybody real quick, we had a similar petition before us earlier this year, I think, which we also 
uh, the recommendation was to to reject, and we did that. What, what how did that differ from these two? The earlier petition um, was only for asking for beer and wine sales, and That's it was right. not asking for to go sales. Sure. So this actually asked for more than the previous right. petition did. Okay. Um, and you know, you you said you know, absent legislative action, this isn't something we'd want to do. Um, and certainly. The petitioners could go to the legislature and try to get a statute that would allow such thing. And it, it seems to me that would be the better path only because it's a major change. Unlike with the COVID allowances where we did, um, frankly, relax some restrictions around people with existing licenses. Um, I can't think of a case where the actual issuance of licenses changed. Do you know what I'm saying? The threshold for getting the license initially didn't change. So, and, you know, just knowing the food truck world, and I love them, um, you know, that'd be a major change in the dynamic around those trucks. And I think it's worthy of a bigger uh, conversation with, with state policymakers. So that would be my suggestion. I think your recommendation is, is a good one, the staff recommendation. Member Garrett, any, any questions or anything to add on this issue? No, I think you just addressed some of the things that I addressed when I was um, meeting with Audrey. Um, at first, it was I was saying, is there something since we're seeing more requests for food trucks and we know that some restaurants that have shuttered has gone to food trucks because it's less expensive and things. Is it something that we're going to be seeing more of? But when she went on to explain everything that she discussed earlier of requirements and things, I was like, yeah, that's a bigger issue that needs to go before the legislators, not us. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think if there is a legislative discussion about it, we'd be happy to engage in that and discuss what we think would be um you know the right way to do something of that sort i don't know what our position would be on the bill itself because there is no bill but you know what i mean we, right. we we have expertise here that we could share so yeah okay with that we're gonna do uh, uh two motions on each of these rule petitions and the motion would be to accept the staff recommendation to deny the petition the first one is um a motion uh, to uh, accept the recommendation by staff on the petition to amend 314.07.0102 to allow stationary food truck to be considered a building so food truck can be licensed for on-premise spirits, beer, wine sales. Motion? I move that we accept the recommendations to deny each, each petition. Okay, I will second, and that's approved. We're going to have to do the second one now, too. And now a motion for the petition to amend 314.07.0102 to allow stationary food truck to be considered a building so food truck can be licensed to receive a to-go endorsement for spirits, beer, and wine sales. The same, I move that we accept the recommendation to deny the petition. Great, and I'm the same, too. I will second that, so that is approved as well. Thank you, Ms. Vasek. Thank you very much. Um, and now, uh, Kathy Hoffman, the Policy and Rules Manager. Are there other, uh, do we have, yeah, we have board meeting prep and a rules update. We do, um, and I'll just briefly speak to uh, social equity rules. No updates to provide today, since that's the project that I'm working on exclusively. And um, Audrey and Jeff will prepare you for what they'll be presenting in the board meeting tomorrow. No other updates on any of the other rules in pro progress at the moment. But I also wanted to give a future rules update. Uh, I haven't done that in a while, and we're at a point where we can start thinking about those sorts of things. So the, the agency has been thinking about general amendments to rules. So these are more repealing rules, uh, removing redundancies, duplication, those kinds of things. Audrey is going to be taking on that project um, in a couple weeks maybe a month or so when um, some of her projects are moved forward and we're in the finalization stage. So we're looking forward to that. Um, as you know, there's continued discussion on Delta 8 and associated concerns with the uh, THC compounds. We do have three deliberative dialogues scheduled now. We announced the first uh, couple of weeks ago, it'll happen tomorrow, April 27th from 1 to, to 2.30 p.m. Um, 
we're fortunate to have Nancy Stella come back and join us as well. We knew we had our original three panelists and Nancy notified me uh, late a couple of weeks ago to let me know he'd be joining as well. So um, again, that'll happen tomorrow. The next will happen on May 31st and the final deliberative dialogue if needed, will happen on uh, June 21st. So that will uh, inform rulemaking. That will be coming up on May 11th. Robert will be bringing uh, Sierra 101 to you um, to begin uh, exploring additional definitions that we might need around THC compounds. So if you remember last earlier this year, we um, promulgated rules around uh, THC compound evaluation. And established WAC 31455560. We have a couple of definitions in there, a handful of them. I'm going to take a look at those and see if we need to expand or repeal. And um, I also want to take this opportunity to say Robert has joined us permanently and will be working on cannabis rules. So that will be his first cannabis project. Um, another project that we're looking at opening related to this subject of THC compounds making sure consumers knowing, know what they're getting in their products is reopening packaging and labeling rules. To take a look at what we've got in terms of what's being disclosed um, and what's being put on packaging. Um, so Jeff will take that project on. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing as soon as those other projects conclude. And we'll also be opening up, we've been wanting to do this for at least a few years, but our advertising rules. Um, there's a lot to a lot for us to update there. Last time we opened um, those rules, I want to say it was 2018, the last update. So we'll be um, taking a look at those. We know that's going to be a big project. It's a lot of updates, and the landscape of advertising has expanded significantly since 2018. So a lot of stuff to look at there. And then finally, just with respect to general stakeholder engagement, um, there's been a lot of discussion around federal legalization. I know Chair Postman, that's of great interest to you and Board Member Garrett. Um, uh, we'd like to begin um, hosting what we call World Cafe sessions. Um, we've uh, spoken internally about this, but it's a broader stakeholder engagement model than deliberative dialogue or a listen and learn models. Um, and we are, are putting those together right now. I imagine those will be announced probably uh, late May, early June, once we have the dates in place and uh, we have a better idea of where we might hold these. Uh, I think when we were thinking about putting these together, we were still contemplating hosting uh, World Cafe in a virtual environment. We may not be as virtual in the middle of June, so we'll see what happens with that. But just wanted to make sure we got that out there and um, uh, started to uh, build some interest in, in the discussion. We're, we're really looking forward to those conversations. There will be a series of three World Cafes um, based on what people are uh, excited what they think uh, they look forward to with, with federal legalization, things that might concern them, and then things that Washington can do to get ready for federal legalization in whatever form it takes. So I'll stop there. Questions? Um, one, just um, you and your team are amazing, but I got exhausted hearing <laughs> that you're going to open advertising, labeling, and we're starting a conversation on THC compounds yeah. again. Um, but, you know, if you guys have that capacity, that's great. But boy, it's going to be a busy year because, of course, before long, we're going to all be looking towards the 2023 legislative session. Um, oh. So, yeah. Um, and we're hoping that this work, especially around THC compounds, it, you know, we've designed it so that it will move us towards the legislative session right. so an interim is short yeah i know uh so we only have you know three or four months to really engage meaningfully in these conversations and with these things forward so yeah. uh yep it's an aggressive timeline but there's a, a lot of work to be done in a very short period of time yeah 
Um, and then on the the World Cafe, I mean, first of all, just a simple World Cafe is just a name for a type of uh, yes. gathering, um, convening, and um, it it it's just a way to get people together to to hopefully prompt some conversation. And some of this came out of, frankly, comments we heard from licensees at board meetings around this issue of what national uh, uh, legalization or decriminalization or normalization, whatever it may look like in the end, would mean. And, um, you know, we've talked about this a little bit, but, um, you know, there are parts of the 502 system that uh, some of our licensees want to really hold on to and protect in a national marketplace. Others that se might seem, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, old school versus what uh, Congress could come up with, and maybe there's an evolution that has to exist. So we want to talk about all of that. And, um, you know, uh, we hope Congress will listen to the states where there are uh, recreational adult use uh, sales today, especially those that are the most experienced in terms of what does work well, what doesn't. Um, and the regulatory body will not be the only voice there, of course. You you all licensees uh, have your own ways of communicating that. But it just sort of struck me that we should see what we can get on the same page about if there are. There's some mutual goals. Let's try to figure it out. The way that uh, Kathy and, and Justin and the team have, have cut up the these three events, it's going to be interesting and a little challenging because it's not what we normally do right this that first one as you said kathy is what are you looking forward to so that is a session where we're all going to try to be positive and go you know if i could write the bill or you know this is what we would want and um frankly we all live in a uh, overly uh, and needlessly negative <laughs> uh framework so we're going to try to move out of that for that conversation I hope we can do that. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about what are the concerns. And and um, it's just, you know, it's an exercise, frankly. And and we hope we get really good participation. No one's required other than our staff will be uh, to attend. But we're going to really uh, encourage licensees to join us and um, have this conversation. And then we'll figure out a process to see if we come up with some mutual goals. I think it'd be really powerful if we do. Um, so, you know, those are my thoughts. I look forward to it. Thank you. Um, yeah. OK. OK. Um, so I will uh, hand it over to either Audrey or Jeff um, okay. just for update on uh, uh, what will be presented at the board meeting tomorrow. Thanks, Jeff. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Postman and Member Garrett. Um, at Tomorrow's uh, board meeting, I plan to request your approval of a CR 105 expedited rulemaking package to implement second substitute House Bill 1210, which passed the, the Washington State Legislature during the 2022 legislative session. In passing this bill, the legislature found that the use of the term marijuana in the United States has discriminatory origins and should be replaced with a more scientifically accurate term, cannabis. And for this reason, the bill replaces the term marijuana with the term cannabis throughout the revised Code of Washington, including Chapter 6950 RCW, the, the Uniform Controlled Substances Act. And the bill also directs the LCB to replace the term marijuana with cannabis throughout the rules of the Liquor and Cannabis Board. Uh, and that occurs about 1,200 times, give or take, uh, in Title 314 WAC. So the, the purpose of the expedited rulemaking will be to replace every occurrence of the term marijuana with the term cannabis, and no other changes to Title 314 WAC are proposed. So under expedited rulemaking, there is a different timeline uh, from uh, regular rulemaking. And under this timeline, the public will have a 45 day public comment period uh, to comment on the proposed rule amendments. And this comment period lasts until July 1st, 2022. And uh, barring any substantial changes to the rule text, we would plan to bring the CR 103 package to you on July 6th, 
2022. And um, under that timeline, we would have the rules in effect 31 days later on August 26th, or I mean August 6th, excuse me, 2022. And, and this uh, ends my presentation today. Um, so I, can I answer any questions? Just make sure my layman's view of this. I mean, and the reason it's um, expedited and, and we're not going to have all the steps we normally do is just because we're mandated to do this. We don't have a preliminary 101 or anything because legislature said do it, right? Right, right. Yeah. It, sec section 168 of the bill uh, specifies that uh, this rulemaking has to be done through the expedited rulemaking process. So yeah. um, that, that, uh, that uh, puts it on a faster track for uh, for implementation. OK, member Garrett, anything? No, thank you. All right, thanks, Mr. Kildall. We'll see you Great, tomorrow you. then. Hello again. Good morning again, Chair Postman, Board Member Garrett. So uh, just some uh, brief information about the items for tomorrow's board meeting on the health call side. So I'll be requesting approval to file a CR 101 pre-proposal statement of inquiry related to implementation of 2022 legislation, Senate Bill 5940. So for background, this is the bill that created a new endorsement allowing domestic alcohol manufacturer licensees, in other words, breweries, wineries, and distilleries to contract with each other and with other non-liquor licensed businesses if the contract doesn't include alcohol products to provide certain packaging services. So this includes things such as canning, bottling, bagging, mixing, repacking. And that bill takes effect June 9th, 2022. So a new rule section and revisions to existing rules are needed to align our agency rules with the new law and help inform licensees about this new endorsement and its requirements. In terms of timeline, if the CR 101 package is approved tomorrow, uh, I'll file it with the code revisor and the informal comment period will begin. Notice will be published in the state register on May 18th. And during this time frame, the project team will begin to meet to create conceptual draft rules and review public comments. We anticipate bringing a CR 102 to the board to consider on July 6th. And our target date for bringing a set of final rules to the board is August 31st, 2022. Are there any questions on on that CR 101? No. no. Okay. Thank you. And then tomorrow is also the public hearing for the CR 102 rule proposal related to axe throwing at liquor licensed premises. And just some background on this. The CR 102 was filed on March 16th, and we held a listen and learn session on February 3rd to gather public feedback. Um, so far, we've only received three comments related to questions slash comments related to this um, CR 102 rule proposal. And uh, those were all in support. So after the comment period closes on April 27th tomorrow, we'll meet again to consider those public comments. And if no substantive changes need to be made to the proposed rules, the CR 103 and final rules could be filed on May 11th at the earliest. And if they are approved that day, then they would go into effect on June 11th. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. No, no questions. No, OK. OK, that's all for me. Thank you. Great. We will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Um, and we're now to our uh, last agenda item, which is board member and executive assistant reports. Uh, anything, member Garrett? Uh, no, I uh, have a social equity task force meeting this afternoon right after uh, litigations for the rest of the afternoon. OK, yeah, good. Be interested to hear how that goes. And uh, Dustin, anything to report? Uh, just quickly looking forward to uh, later this morning. Uh, Jim Volendroff is uh, coming in, so I'll get to meet him in person, uh, picking up his equipment and uh, you know state issued devices and setting up his calendars and that kind of stuff. So uh, looking forward to uh, meeting him actually in person today and uh, yeah. get some things going. Uh, he starts next Tuesday, so. Oh, that's great. Yeah, fast yeah, yeah. track the next couple of weeks. So very exciting. OK, great. Thanks yep. for the reminder on that. OK, well, and that uh, does it for the caucus meeting. We will adjourn the uh, caucus for April 26th, 2022. We'll be back at uh, 10 tomorrow for the uh, board meeting.
Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.